So, once you've got that good idea, you can begin the process of economic growth. Let me give you some examples. <clears throat> we'll start in Alaska. And it's right through those clouds there, beyond those trees, the highest peak in North America, 20,000 feet high. Now, the point about this story is economic stimulus, because when they created the Nolly National Park, actually it was called Mount McKinley National Park way back in 1917, now it's called Denali. Um, in the early 1920s, the total number of visitors that visited that park was seven in one particular year in the 1920s. Now, Mary Carey fought to get this road built north of, uh, from Anchorage up to Fairbanks. That was her goal. And the governor said, the governor was opposed to this particular plan. Now, naturally, Mary Carey's plan came right by her house here. But uh, the governor was opposed to it because he said, Alaska already has two highways. How many highways does a state need? And in fact, this became highway number three. Um, now they say there are three, there really are eight, although I was on highway number eight, it's a dirt road that's only seasonal. That's how, that's how many roads there are in Alaska. But anyway, what this highway did is it brought economic stimulus right up this valley here by connecting Fairbanks. The road from Anchorage to Fairbanks was cut by about three hours. Think about the businesses, the, the truckers delivering their goods and how much faster that's going to be. That's what an economic stimulus is. So when this road is put in, it helped, by the way, this, this view here, she's got her lodge and her uh, restaurant and everything, so it obviously helped some people uh, internally here. But let me tell you, by the 1970s, when this road is being completed, Denali National Park had 40,000 visitors a year. The year after this road was completed, 80,000 visitors. That's economic stimulus. So. When the government says, we're going to pay people to fill potholes on Delaware Avenue in Albany, which, by the way, the 2009 economic stimulus, that was the first money that hit the Albany area, okay, that was no real stimulus. This is economic stimulus saying we can connect Anchorage in the south, Fairbanks in the center, with a road that cuts through here and increases tourism, increases business by decreasing traffic, by de uh, time to, to get from one point to another. So cost of goods goes down when truckers costs go down all that is economic stimulus that that meant goods from the interior could get to anchorage faster that's what an economic stimulus is so now you know what happened in alaska and how growth through a, a new um <clears throat> road has improved trade has improved has brought down the cost of production typically uh, economic growth and development replaces human capital with other types of capital such as machinery and equipment and the ability to uh, big huge boats to travel from one uh, place to another or uh, trains or automobiles or uh, trucks all these kinds of things that improve the ability for goods to either be produced or to get to market now the second place we're going to take a look at is actually Martha's Vineyard where they have chosen to not put a bridge from the mainland to Martha's Vineyard and they've chosen to not put a bridge from the island of Martha's Vineyard to the island of Chappaquiddick so let's take a look at the economic implications what I want to talk about here I'm in Edgartown Martha's Vineyard you can see the Edgartown Harbor in the foreground here and if you look this way you'll see the infamous island of Chappaquiddick and if you look to this way here you'll see Happy Ferry that's crossing. There's a slight little area that is not connected between the island of Martha's Vineyard and the island of Chappaquiddick. All right, camera person, have you got it on me here? Okay. Now, Chappie Ferries, they're crossing about every 90 seconds. Are you looking at me? No. Well, I want you looking at me. Now, listen. Every 90 seconds, of their, about every three minutes, three cars can cross. It's about what you have to is a very restricted supply of people on any given day you can only have a couple of hundred cars on Chappaquiddick Island so that makes for desolate deserted beaches which is certainly one of the things that we're looking for when coming to a Martha's Vineyard Chappaquiddick vacation. Why don't they put in a bridge from island to island? It would be fairly simple to do and relatively speaking 
fairly inexpensive for governments to do. But obviously, that would totally change the nature of Chappaquiddick Island. What would happen here is it would look like the Jersey Shore is what would happen because there'd be access for everyone. Instead, we have very limited access. We find ourselves with a, uh, a car in line over here. My wife's in the car, and we estimate about 20 to 25 minutes in line to get across to the island, rather than what would simply be about a 30 second trip by, by uh, car. Now, I haven't been back to Martha's Vineyard since. It's a bit of a pricey resort, but I have been to the Jersey Shore, where an island just off of uh, the Jersey Shore seaside uh, island is uh, a place where they did build a bridge. And so let's take a look at the, how we define economic growth and development on the Jersey Shore. Talked a lot about island economics, mostly Martha's Vineyard, but here I'm at an island off the coast of New Jersey. You can see the beautiful beaches, and uh, if you look to this way here, you'll see the tacky touristy gift shops where you can get. Uh, Really cheap t-shirts with bad slogans and uh, saltwater taffy and, and the like. What we have off in this direction here is, of course, everything that's fun. I shouldn't be wearing my Boston hat. In fact, my wife has my New York Yankee hat, which is what I've been mostly wearing here today because I'm in Yankee country, not Red Sox uh, nation. But anyway, what we've got here is the, the difference is between this and Martha's Vineyard. They're both islands off the coast of uh, the U.S., but this one has a bridge, just you can't see it in that direction. Don't bother panning, Mr. Cameraman. But that bridge means all sorts of goods and services are going to come in here. And this is exactly the thing that Martha's Vineyard residents are afraid of. The, the tacky gift shops, the, the uh, really bad, really crowded beaches, and uh, the fun park. So to preserve the quaint nature of Martha's Vineyard, they've avoided having a bridge. And by having a bridge here, we have all sorts of fun and the beach too. Sometimes economic growth and development takes place in the strangest places for the strangest reasons. I'll give you an example. Drugs. I don't mean illegal drugs, I mean legal drugs. They're often made in Switzerland or in a little principality right next to Switzerland called Liechtenstein. Why? Well, let's find out. We're in a little um, town called Fedux in the Principality of Liechtenstein. You can see the, the Prince's Castle over here. Actually, anything to the left is Liechtenstein, and anything to the right, the mountains over here, is Switzerland. But I'm at the home of a family friend who runs 12 pharmaceutical labs. And um, we're talking about uh, what it is to, uh, to deal with, with doing drugs, not doing drugs, making drugs. Oftentimes there's 10 different um, products that you'll try to, put, to make to turn into something that actually becomes something of value. And typically when um, they do that and you ask for a patent, the patent only lasts 15 years. So most of the profits that these companies make ends up getting turned back into research and development for future products. So um, that's his take on, on the pharmaceutical industry and, and, and big drugs. By the way, um, I was told by my children that the uh, all German men have mustaches, so while I'm in Germanic countries, I need to be growing a mustache. 